just wanted to show you a little mini that I've made here. Now this is um, was really quick uh, for me to make. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be quick to you know to everybody, but. Um, I just started playing around. This is an envelope mini. I just started playing around with some envelopes because I've got so many of them. Uh, but anyway, so um, it's just really simple. And uh, I've got uh, a, a coating of um, glue all, uh, Mod Podge, whatever, whatever you would use um, on everything. Uh, just to give it some you know, to protect it. But uh, this was made with the Home Sweet Home collection, Graphic 45. And, uh, you know, I just I just used what I had left of the paper. I had an 8x8 and I had a few 12x12 12 12 sheets. Um, but I had partial a partial left of the 8x8 and I wanted to get rid of it. So this is what I did. Um, so opening it up here, I've got uh, this is a, a magnet closure right here, and it opens up like this. And there's uh, I backed a piece of uh, one of the pa pages from the eight by eight on to black cardstock, and I have uh, quite a few different recipe cards throughout. Um, and this is just a little side pocket. With some more recipe cards, cut some things from the paper. Then I have um, another pocket here. Now this has got quite a few in it. I think there's uh, six, six in there. So there's a lot that fits in that, and then it would just tie closed. And that's a nice envelope. Uh, and believe this is all envelopes so um, I have a tutorial to follow if you're going to be interested but and then there's just some cutouts from the uh, paper collection this is a pop-up see if I can get this in there and uh, you got these two things and then a nice big now this is for photos this is for recipes uh, you can you can use the recipe cards as um, actual recipe cards or you can put your photo on the back and and just write what the what the uh, photos were um, you know either way you want to do it or both if you're if you're big into cooking you might want to make a picture of the spread that you were using you know uh, uh, what your table looked like when you use that particular recipe uh, you know all kinds of stuff so make sure I'm keeping this in frame here um, and then here's a little half pocket little tuck spot here uh, I was getting low on papers so I just did uh, a little collage there and this is a pocket and I've got recipe cards on both sides but again if you're not using this as a recipe book if you've got a vegetable garden this would be adorable to keep a uh, you know something about your vegetable garden in here what you planted and how how well it did and things um, more uh, cut up cut up cutouts from the uh, just the paper line I did have the I don't know, what do you call those envelopes and tags or something like that I had that uh, and I used almost all of that this is one of those and unfortunately I glued this whole thing down so you would not be able to slide a photo I don't know I once I got it down I went oh shoot why did I do that and I went to pick it up and it wasn't coming so there you go okay again a little tuck in there this is actually glued down this is another pocket, and you've got the recipe. Uh, oh no, this one's got just um, some of the paper on the back, and a little tuck spot here. But this is really cute. I thought it was. It really came out nice, especially when you think that these are just all envelopes. 
Um, and uh, I'll give you a little materials list. Now this is a, uh, let me pull this over here. This is a belly band. And I've got a card in there. It's really cute when even if you don't have the card in there. Um, but I like the way the colors worked on that. And then another big pocket. And then here's a nice uh, accordion pocket that's got quite a few uh, recipe cards in there. And again, those can be used as photo mats. Okay, so there's the little book. I, I think eventually this will go on my Etsy. I'm trying to get some things done to get on my Etsy shop, but uh, it's paper, lace, and bling in case you want to check it out. Uh, I should have this by next week. I should have it on my Etsy. Okay, guys, I will, if you're interested, I am going to follow up with a materials list. So, um, I'll be right back with that. Okay, the materials list for the envelope mini that I just showed you, um, you need, I started off with nine and these are 5 by 7 or A7 car, uh, envelopes, 5 by 7s That's all you need is nine of them. And you'll get, uh, you'll get everything done with that. Um, some paper. Now I had about, oh wow, how many did I have? On the 8 by 8 see I even used the um, part of this in my cover. <laughs> Um, what did I have? I had about 13 of the 8x8 left, maybe maybe 15. Maybe 15 of the 8x8 left, and I have one whole sheet that I did not do anything with, and one almost whole sheet. I cut out some stuff for the front cover. Uh, and then a few partials and a bunch of little scraps. But I used my scraps... Um, I used scraps on this. This was all scraps. And then I had a page in here somewhere. Right here. And these were scraps. So, um, yeah. You know me, I like to use my scraps up. So, and then I have a, a, uh, yeah. Um, my art group that I go to, my um, uh, altered book club group that I go to, the book that I'm working on this month, the theme is recipes. So I thought, well, how perfect is that? I'm going to use all of my scraps and uh, come up with something nice. Now, I had two... I used two 12 by 12 sheets of paper and I used, oh, a few more scraps. I used um, I think I used three, three of these. Two on the outside itself and then uh, there are a few uh, bits and pieces throughout where I use the the actual paper, you know, just just as um, as covering of the. But I use the cover two on the cover of the book, and then one inside in bits and pieces. So um, three pieces of cardstock that match your papers. Now um, you know any combination of that. Is I was just again I was just trying to use up uh, a line that that you know I was kind of done with I I think I've done four projects with this home sweet home collection I had quite a few 12 by 12s so um, yeah just trying to finish that up so and I pretty much did um, and then of course you'll need a paper cutter some some way of cutting paper I did use uh, a punch so any kind of you know, if, if, if you so desire, you don't have to. You can use a corner rounder or nothing at all. Um, I used my Distress Ink, the Black Soot. Um, what else? What else? Glue. 
I did use uh, some score tape and I used glue all to cover everything on the outside. I did two coats of glue all. Uh, I also used Elmer's Extreme um, for, for some of the just gluing paper to paper. And for some of the stuff I wanted it to be stronger, I used the Art Glitter Glue. But, uh, gosh, I, you know, a bone folder, score, a scoreboard it would be handy, not necessary. You can still, if you got a ruler and, and a bone folder, you can score, you know, you can do your scoring. But I think that was about it. And uh, pretty, pretty easy. So stay tuned because it's coming up. Bye, guys. Okay, I'm kind of hoping this is going to be quick. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I have Home Sweet Home. I've done a couple of um, projects with this 8x8, and I've got a, a few of the 12x12 12 12 pages left, and I just, I'm thinking I want to get rid of it. So I tried to figure out something that would be kind of cool. Um, and as you guys may be watching some of my videos, realized I had a bunch of those cards that you get in the mail free, trying to get you to, you know, subscribe or something, send them money. Anyway, so my mom had just as many envelopes, obviously, as cards. Um, so I grabbed out some 5x7. Now you can do this with any size envelope, because uh, basically I'm going to show you how I'm folding them and manipulating them to uh, to make what I've got started here so far. You'll need nine. So nine whatever size. Uh, these are the, I think they're A7. I, I, I'm not quite sure I know which one, but it's A, A7 I think. Um, but it's a 5 by 7 envelope. I'm pretty sure, I don't think it's... Yeah, 5 by 7 Okay. So anyway, so you'll need nine of those, um, and you can do any color. You don't have to have white, but if you only have white, I'll show you what I did to make it work for whatever you've got. Uh, I am using black paper. Um, this is some that I got at a garage sale, and it, I think I think it's from Walmart. It's West Westrum Crafts, 2006. So I don't know if anybody whoever sells this anymore, but. Again, I got it at a garage sale. It's working fine for me, but it is some of the thinner cardstock, which because I'm using this and then this, it's going to be fine. Okay, so you'll need some cardstock, whatever color that you deem necessary, and I would say you probably need uh, maybe 10 sheets will get you through the majority of, of what we're going to do, okay? That's a guesstimation there, though, guys. See, I've got bits and pieces of this stuff left over, and some of these are pretty much 5 by 7 and I think that's what made me think uh, that I might work some magic with this thing and get this stuff all gone. And I have a few blue sheets, uh, which I thought worked pretty well with the blue. Uh, I don't have a red that works at all, and I don't have a green that works at all. I, I was really, I mean, this red is a tough red. Um, I couldn't find anything. So, but I've got some, some solid blue if I want it. Okay. Um, so, let's go over. I've got three. This is just going to be like a three signature little book. I'm probably going to use... You'll need a scoreboard, and, and just the little scoreboard will work, the little score pal, I guess. Um, you know, something to cut your paper with. Uh, ruler is always handy. I've also got some, um, some of these that I, I forgot that I had for this when I did some of the other projects. Uh, I can't remember what these are called. Tags and Pockets. So I've got a whole set of these, and I think some of these papers have, like this one's got all of this stuff, and 
this one's got some, uh, you know, some of these. So these will come in handy, but I might want to use this instead. I don't know. I'm hoping I have enough of this paper to get through this, but there's going to be three signatures, three envelopes used in each signature. Okay, so let me put these aside here. Um, also, if you have uh, whatever color cardstock that you're going to use, then um, I'm not really sure where it ended up, but I had some um, acrylic paint. Um, I had the Tim Holtz Dauber, uh, but any you know any acrylic paint, uh, I just went around all of the edges of all of my envelopes. But you could use distress ink. Um, you could use. Uh, a distress stain, you know, if you've got one that matches your cardstock or, or looks good with the cardstock. Okay, so uh, these are not done. I just, I, I thought, you know, why am I filming this? So here I am. Um, so this was my, this is where I kind of figured out what I was going to do. And it's uh, pretty, pretty easy here, but. So this envelope and this one got stuck together, um, putting the flap behind this one. This flap belongs to this envelope. The flap from this envelope is behind it. And then this envelope was opened up facing top up and stuck it to this as well. Okay, so you have a no pocket, just a plain page. You'll have a flap. I will cut this down to four and a half and this will be a pocket, a side loading pocket. And then flat sheet, flat sheet. And then this will be a flat sheet and this is where the binding will be. I'm not sure exactly. It's probably just going to be like a, a hidden hinge binding. Stack the deck, something like that. So that one is this one right here. So, and here it is with all of the um, black paint around it. Okay, there's that. And now this is still open, but it's just going to have paper put flat on it. Uh, here's the flap. Here's the flap. Again, paper's going to go over the top of this, so that will all be covered, and all of the black, it will just blend in. Alright, and then here's this side, and this is the pocket, the side load pocket. So when we put the paper on here, I will have a very small, short line right across there, but I've made the tag for the pocket already. And then we're going to flip that and we have two solids and then flip this and that's where our binding goes. Okay, so there's that one. Then there's this one here and it opens this way first and I'm going to have a belly band. And then uh, this one, let's see, uh, this opened up and then the, the card is stuck here. Um, let's see. Did I do that? Yes. And then this is glued down. This is the, the, the front. This piece is actually the bottom. I just took it off of here. So this piece that's glued on is actually the bottom of this. And I think I have a one that is pulled apart so you can see what I did. So this piece was on top just like this, okay? And then here's your, your front. I pulled this off. This glued to the front of another one. And then this will be your belly band. And I flipped this to the inside for strength. 
and just glued it down. And so that is that page. And then I took this one front up and glued it to the front of this middle. Okay, so we're like this. Open this up. I took this flap. Wait a minute. Okay. Ooh, I get confused. Yes, so the, the middle envelope, which both the outsides are glued to on the front, then that flap, this is the middle envelope flap, just gets glued to this envelope here. And this is cut for a pocket. Okay? So this is how we are so far. We're opened up. We've got our belly band. We've got this and we've got this. And then you flip it over and there's the binding. And that one is this. Let's see if I get, yeah. So we've got the top opened up. And here is the finished out, well not decorated, but finished out belly band. And this is what's there, is what's here. And I'll, I'll show you how I got this. And then this is glued down, so this is just one solid sheet. It's cut down to four and a half, so it's cut down. And this is a pocket. Okay, so that's going to be a pocket. And then this flips open, and you've got two solid sheets there. All right, then you close and close and flip, and that part is what goes on your binding. Close, close, flip, binding. Okay, so there's that one. And if I'm going too fast, just let me know, and I will, um, I will uh, do them all for you. Okay, so this is another three envelopes. So this top envelope, put it this way. Uh, I just opened up the flap, flipped it over on its other side, and I took just this one flap out of the mix, and now I have a side pocket. Okay? So this, this flap from underneath, it was just like this, and I just picked my finger up and ran it this way, and flip this up. So now I have a side pocket and then I flip this around so that I will have a top flip. Okay? So that's that one just opened up just like it is. The second one is opened up and it's uh, back to back and it's just glued to this flap. And this will be cut to four and a half inches because this will be another side load pocket. Each one of the signatures has a side load pocket or uh, pages. Um, and then two full pages. And we've got this. Now what I did with this one is that I actually took and cut down this to about one inch and I made myself this. It's a nice pocket. Okay, so this is three and a half by seven, and this piece is um, seven and a half by eight. Scored a half inch on, um, on this side here, and then this putting it on the 8 inch side you're going to score at 4 and 3 quarters. Putting on the 7 and a half inch side you're going to put a half inch on each side. Okay? And you need one of each one of those pieces. And then what I did was this is the same score. Okay? All the way down. I just, here I just put a V. I ran myself a um, pretty border. I flip this up this way and I left this here 
so it makes the it, it gave me something to glue the top on. Glued it right down to the bottom here, and then I've got the sides, and that gives me a really nice pocket. Okay, and then we're going to open this up, and here is my flap because this is this. That whole pocket, that's that. Now we're looking at this, there's it is, and there is a top flap. And this is four and seven eighths by seven. Okay, so there's that. Close it up, flip the page, flip the page. Here's my side load pocket, and here is my cut down to four and a half. My I mean, this is my side pocket, this is my side load uh, tag pocket. Flip, flip, and again this one, the same thing, just add it to the flaps. Except this one is top to top, settled in and glued together. Okay, but we're right here, and I've got two, two uh, solid pages, and then binding binding. Okay, so there is where we're at, and let me show you on, let's see, is it this one? Where's my, here, let me show you this. I just took a scrap piece of paper, and I slid it in, um, let me just use some white so you can see what I did. I slid it in. Oh, that's not going to work because it's too big. There. I slid it in to where I wanted it to be started. Okay? So I lined it up exactly where I was going to want it to be started. And I took a pen and I made a mark along the, let's see, let me find the actual, nope, <laughs> I'm so confused, here we go, so I slid it into, once I made my piece, I slid it in, lined it up where I was going to want it to be, made a mark, okay, and then I slid it over, and this was just to get a, put it where I wanted it. This was just to get a template. I made a mark on this side because they're not necessarily going to be the same. Okay? And then I went inside the score line. Um, so say, you know, your score line, well, of course you can't see that, but you want to cut inside the score line so that your template is going to be smaller than the actual uh, this is the piece that came that got cut out but so that it, it's going to to be that the piece that you're going to stick on top is going to be longer than this piece so you're going to cover all your white up um, but if you if you take your black uh, acrylic because you can't see it here because I've already covered it but uh, I also inked up all of the sides on this as well when um, when I inked this all up you know um, I should say painted it all up um, so that's how I did that and I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory my tags are and let me find, I wrote, uh, I think I wrote, the, wrote it down in this one. Um, but again, if you don't use the 5x7s, you're just going to, you know, make it small enough where you get decorative paper on it, uh, get a picture on it, or whatever you're going to do, that you're going to have enough room. So I've got a, a good a bit of room in there, and I left it with... Um, like a half inch sticking out because I'm going to use my envelope punch and make tabs. So I thought that would be kind of cute. Um, four and seven eighths by six and a half. 
is uh, what I made my my three tags that I have um, one in each signature. So that is where I'm at right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, stop it right there and try and get this decorated and then I will come back and show you what I did with it. But again if I went too fast through that and you need something more just to let me know. Um, I, I think I covered it pretty well but you know I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think I do anyway. <laughs> Alright guys um, yeah you just have to let me know on that. Alright I'll be back and show you what I came up with. Okay guys this has been around for eons but I haven't seen anybody really doing it lately so I'm just going to show you um, and I'm, I'm making this a little learn with Lisa thing but this is um, on the um, right now I'm making my envelope mini with the rest of my home sweet home collection by graphic 45 this is how you get four five by seven uh, mats with one 12 by 12 piece of paper. So, um, let's see. I'm going to start. And it doesn't really matter which way you start. If you if you cut, if you have five inches, you put your paper five inches. Okay. Then you got your count cal your calendar. Your ruler going up to seven. So you're going to cut up to the seven, and then you're going to pick up and move. So now, let's see, and here's your cut. We're flipping it around this way. So now we are going to put this at five. Okay, and my ruler is at seven. And I'm going to lay it down, my ruler, yep, yeah, my pointer is on the ruler at 7, and I'm going to cut back this way. There's my first 5 by 7. Now I have 7 here. And I'm going to put this on 5 again. Close up my ruler, find where my 7 is, and I'm going to cut to my 7. There's my second 5x7. And then I'm going to flip it one more time. Put it on the 5. And this time I can just cut it straight across. There's my third 7. My fourth 5x7. And you get this nice little square piece of paper to do something fantastic with. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to show you how to do that. See you guys. Bye. Okay, let me show you how I'm doing the binding part of this because, you know, these are envelopes. They're not super strong. Um, so I'm taking a piece of black cardstock. Now, it does not have to go all the way into the envelope, but I'd like for it to, you know, go a good, a good bit of ways into the envelope, at least half. Um, and you want to make sure it's going to slide in there fairly easily and that you're going to take it all the way to the outer edge of the envelope all right so and you're going to want to glue it to the inside of this flap this flap here not to this because then you're going to just seal it shut kind of thing so we're going to glue it and slide it down in here flush with the edge and then glue it up. Alright, so I'm going to get this flush with the edge of my envelope. And then I'm going to get as much glue. Let's see. Hold this. Get as much glue in here as I can get. Even put some on the inside of the envelope part. 
This is not the easiest thing, but here we go. Make sure that we're still flush and put everything down. There we go. And uh, another um, hint on the parts of the envelopes that we're not using as pockets, and of course you can change it out and do pockets anywhere you want. Uh, I would say glue the envelopes together so that there's not the crinkly noise, although some people like that crinkly noise. Let's just make sure nothing seeped out. Nope, nothing seeped out. So now I have a little more stronger, firmer pocket for my binding. And then, when you go to put your paper on, you're going to bring that flush, somewhat flush. Let me get this little snippet off of here. I suppose you could either bring it flush or you could have a border all the way around because um, the border all the way around would probably work just fine and that's going to um, make it that much more stronger. But I just wanted to show you how I was doing that, and then this is the part that will go on the hinge right there. Okay? All right, guys. Be back. Okay, so I've done the, uh, the old trick where you get four 5x7s out of a 12 piece, uh, 12 by 12 piece, I've got to learn with Lisa. I'll attach that to the uh, below the video. <laughs> I love when people do that. It's over. It's over there. It's over. It's whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, so I don't really need a whole bunch of uh, five by sevens. What I need is smaller. But uh, I went ahead and did that because I felt like it was going to give me the biggest bang for my buck. So I did three sheets. I did. Uh, uh, a regular 12 by 12 just cardstock and then uh, this is the same sheet it's the so I've got two that are facing the way I'm putting everything in the book and then two of these which doesn't really matter which way you put it it's uh, it's the same it you know it's got pieces facing every direction so you can use it however you want um, so that's how I separated those out, and then I did the same with these. I've already used one of these, but I've got two that were facing this way, and then two that were this way. So those are the ones that I'm going to use the backs on. Okay, so uh, I also cut up one of my the cut-apart sheets. Now it, it is this on the back. So if I wanted to use that, I still could. That's why I like I left these these individuals. So um, if I want to put like this on a pocket or something, if I need some blue, so that's uh, that's these. So now that I've got all of this stuff ready, we can. Uh, I have put all my five by sevens down where five by sevens were good. And I showed you how I did uh, just a second ago where I, how I did, I've only done one of the uh, binding areas, but this is really nice and thick and firm now, so that's good. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of get you where I was at this point. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm doing my closure here, uh, so I haven't put this down yet. Um... But, so I'm still thinking on that. Still thinking on that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm using magnets or if I want to use uh, like a, a, a tie with a string. I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. I got that. That's my flap. And here's my side pocket. Still be putting something here. Just, I'm not got down to that part yet. Uh, here's my tag, and I'm not going to put any paper on my tags yet because I got to make sure I have enough just to cover my envelopes. Um, so the the tags, for the most part, may remain blank. This one will have to have something because I put that's my my reminder of what sizes they were. 
So, and remember, these were cut to four and a half, so I didn't use my five by fives on them yet. And uh, so that one, and then there's this one. So I made a pocket out of this. And this was some of the smaller scraps that I had. Uh, there's this. This is the flap, and it was four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths, so it's smaller than the five by seven. So these will fit on there nicely. My pocket's still there, that, and i got to do these bindings. Okay, so that's where I'm at so far, and I'll come back and show you what I've done with all of this stuff. Well, I am getting ready to make my covers, and I just wanted to remind you, it's a messy job, but uh, if you don't have sandpaper, just about every lady and guy, for that matter, because everybody gets a hangnail or whatever, get your nail file out. Rough up the box. And uh, I'm, I'm also using the Home Sweet Home, my 8x8, eight eight, so I'm just going to rough that up too. So just a reminder to do that, and that's a quickie for you. I'll be back. Okay, well, I've got my book all put together, and I've done a few things, which I'll show you later. This is pretty much, if you don't have enough paper, which I, I mean, I probably could, but I don't like what I have left all together. I mean, this is, this is pretty much what I have left. Uh of what I started with, which wasn't very much. So, um, that, and I, I, I didn't want to put this on because everybody puts this on the cover. So I didn't want to do that. Um, so, and I had a bunch of these little scraps, little pieces. Okay. So what I decided to do was I have this and it is going to wrap around and there's going to be a, about an inch and a half on the edge on both front and back okay um, and then in the center between this and this I've cut another piece of black paper that fits right in between there and I am going to Mod Podge, which I'm also going to Mod Podge my entire front cover because I find that it is really helpful in keeping it uh, not getting torn up and things like that because, you know, you tend to be hard with these things. So, <clears throat> I thought I would just show you um, what I'm going to do. So, and th this one, see, am I still on here? This one is in two pieces, but it matches, it was cut, matches perfectly. So I'm going to just try and meld those two together um, just right where they won't really look too funky. Um, so I was just going to do that. When I finish with it, I'll come back and I'll show you how it's all going to work. All right. See you guys. Okay, one thing before you get started on that, you always want a damp sponge lightly ever so lightly damp so I just dunked this in water several times to really get it moist and then I'm just taking it on to my paper towel roll and really trying to soak up the majority of the big stuff because I want I want it to be just lightly damp there, that, there that'll work okay and I said Mod Podge but I'm actually going to use the Elmer's glue all which I have found to really like. Now, I've got all my pieces and I decided that I wanted them to run this way versus this way. And I've got them set up kind of the way I want them on there. So I'm just going to do a section at a time and I'm just going to slide these down so they're in the... and slide these up. So they're in... and I'm going to work with this. So let's get this open, and I'm going to put a bunch on there, and just kind of spread it around so that it total coverage 
Okay. Now I'm going to lay this. And I'm going to have to stand up, make sure I'm getting the edge. So if my head's in the picture, I'm sorry. And I did just get a new perm. So <laughs> my hair's nice and curly. Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm kind of a corkscrew myself, so it works for me. And I wanted that home sweet home to really kind of be centered. There we go. Cute. And then this one. Cute. And now I'm going to squirt a little bit on top of this. there. Oops, a little piece of hair. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to work our way down. So you see how I'm doing this and I'm going to do the rest of it this way and I will come back to you when it's dry and I'll show you how I'm attaching it. Okay, once you get it all glued and you get your, your um, glue onto your surface Um, if you have release paper, you can really make sure you don't have any bubbles, everything's laying flat. It also helps with the finish. Squeegee it and then pull it off. Oh, I've only had that happen one other time. Well... I don't, uh, I don't like that, but we'll figure something out. I'll put a little something, something right there. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have wet glue when you put it on here. I should have used the other side because I had already done it once, and then I thought, oh, you know what, I need to show you guys this. And then I put it back down with the glue on this, so then it was no longer a nonstick surface. And that's why I pulled that up. And the last time I did that, I had did the same thing. It was dry and I didn't notice it on there and put it down. So the nonstick surface only used, works if there's nothing else on it. Duh. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll figure out something for that. But I just wanted to show you that. All right, be back when it's done. Well, I won't be that back when it's done because this is going to be a little learn with Lisa thing. Um, but this is part of my mini mini envelope uh, yeah mini envelope book so um, it will be in the same playlist but it's going to be a learn with Lisa as well okay alright guys bye then all you do I've already done uh, one side here is you take your scissors and I wouldn't use your sharp scissors I'm using my Tim Holtz ones um, because you are cutting a bunch of glue and you just are going to cut right up on the back end of that paper and get this part done and this There you go. And then this is going to go around on my spine. Okay? It's going to have to be um, bent a little bit, but uh, it's solidly sealed. I did put two coats of the glue all. The glue all is not quite as thick as the Mod Podge, Mod, Mod Podge but, um, and where I had the tear here. And then I had a little spot here, and I just cut a flower and put it there so it pretty much goes away. And uh, I put one of the little uh, stamps there, so there's that. And so I think it's really cute. And uh, so that's how you can use some scraps for on your book. You can also Mod Podge them just all on your book. I've even Mod Podge. Um, book pages, torn book pages to the entire inside front and back cover. Put some colors on it, whatever you want, but uh, um, 
you can get your scraps used up uh, in very creative ways. So you just have to kind of give it a thought. Anyway, that was it. Bye, guys.